After watching Avatar more times than I want to admit, I realized that there's so much more to Spider's story that we don't know. In fact, I think he'll be one of the most important characters in the next three movies. Let's dive in and talk about what most people tend to overlook about him, his mom. We didn't get much information from the movie other than the fact that she was linked to Miles Quaritch and that she died right after Spider was born. The movie doesn't say how she died or who she was, and so that was one of the many burning questions I had at the end. But thankfully, it got answered in a new prequel comic called Avatar, The High Ground. And no, fellow Star Wars fans, unfortunately, it doesn't have a high ground joke. Sorry. Anyway, the comic revealed that Spider's mom was Paz Sakaro, a scorpion pilot for the RDA. And it also focused on the romance between her and Miles. Long story short, it's a typical boy meets girl story. And I gotta admit, watching Miles Quaritch go from a cartoonishly evil colonel to a guy boinking a fellow Marine was, well, strange. It felt unnatural. Like watching hot dogs being made, you know? You can't unsee stuff like that. Anywho, Miles and Paws did the deed, and Spider was born, making him Pandora's first natural-born human. But Paws was killed before he could even take his first steps. Remember the assault on the Tree of Souls from the first movie? She was part of Quaritch's squad, and was killed by an arrow that managed to pierce her scorpion gunship. And you know what makes her death sadder? The fact that she had a photo of Spider with her when she died. And that's why it's important to keep her in mind. Because eventually, Spider's gonna find out what happened. Moving on. Why would Spider betray the Sully family and the Navi? It's just a working theory right now, but there's a reason why I think he's gonna switch sides in the third movie. The first and most obvious one is Neytiri. It's clear that she harbors a deep-rooted hatred toward him. She doesn't like him at all, and constantly treats him like an outsider. He'll always be one of the sky people to her. In fact, there's a moment in the high ground where Jake and Neytiri's kids get into serious trouble exploring the old war zone from the first movie. Loak and Spider end up almost killing Kiri after fiddling with the down Samson. Jake blames Loak for the stupid mistake, but Spider steps up and accepts his part in it. And that's what puts Neytiri over the edge. She puts the blame entirely on his shoulders and calls him one of the sky people who thinks he can walk into a place and do anything he wants. That's a bit harsh, considering he's just a kid who made a mistake. Jake and his brothers and sisters accept him as he is, but Neytiri's mistreatment is what drives him away from the only people he calls family. And if he finds out that one of the Navi impaled his biological mom with an arrow, that'll make things worse. One of the other reasons why I think he'll end up betraying Jake and co is his decision to help his biological dad, Miles. I know what you're gonna say about this, and you're right. It doesn't make sense that Spider would wanna help a genocidal maniac. He was completely okay with killing innocent Tolkien's, and I'd agree with you. But you see, humans are incredibly complex. Yes, he's ready to commit mass murder in order to get revenge on Sully and destroy the Navi. But he's also one of the few people who doesn't make Spider feel like an outsider by including him in his inner circle. Even if that inner circle involves plotting against his adoptive family and the Navi. Hey, I never said Miles is a great dad, but he is a dad nonetheless. And if Spider has a chance to be with his biological father just to have his own family, then I think he might just do it. After all, he's the bridge that connects both Jake and Quaritch in a bizarre father-son trio. James Cameron spoke about this recently with BTV Korea and revealed that Spider's gonna be one of the most interesting characters in the series. He's the pivot point between Jake and Quaritch, constantly bringing them together or pushing them away. Oh, and I haven't even talked about Spider's bond with Kiri yet, who's probably the only person who fully understands how he feels. And now that she's finally understanding the mystical nature of Ewa, she could use that information to possibly help Spider find his true identity. And I don't know, 
Maybe instead of betraying Jake and switching sides, Spider could bring his two dads together. This is a new theory I've been working on, and it's partly because of Cameron's BTV interview. So there's a part where he says that the sequels won't just be about Jake and Miles constantly fighting each other. They're both arch enemies, sure, but there needs to be more underneath the surface. Spider's the only person that has a deep connection with both of them, and he might be the person who finally brings them together. I'm not expecting them to let bygones be bygones and hug, but there could be a way for them to put their differences aside for a common goal. What that could be, I don't know. But I do know that Miles Qualrich has come a long way as a character. In the first movie, he barely had a personality beyond the comically evil Colonel spouting one-liners to anyone who'd listen. But now, he's actually conflicted about what he wants to do next. He even spared Kiri's life because Neytiri had a knife to Spider's throat. Oh yeah, that scene. I didn't mention that, huh? Yeah, that's definitely gonna complicate things between them. It doesn't help that Neytiri didn't hesitate to threaten him, knowing full well that a person like Quaritch could have killed Kiri anyway. But then again, he's not the same one-note villain anymore. And that's what makes the Jake Miles Spider trio so intriguing. Because it means that there's room for Miles to redeem himself. Now, I'm not saying he's gonna become buddies with Jake in the fifth movie. That seems highly unlikely considering the god-awful things he's done. Plus, Cameron already said that he and Jake are destined to fight each other forever. It's like Batman and the Joker. You just can't have them sit down and be friends. But that shifts the focus to Miles' growth as a character. He's permanently in the Navi body, so there's no going back to his old life as a human. This is it. He's a permanent part of Pandora now, and he's adapting to the Navi lifestyle. His evolution as a villain could turn him into more of an anti-hero. Actually, we've already seen this in another popular TV show that pulls off the same dynamic. If you've watched season three of The Boys, then you'll see the obvious parallel between Homelander, Billy, and Ryan and the Avatar trio. Just like Homelander and Billy put their differences aside for a second to protect Ryan, Jake and Miles could do the same for Spider in the Avatar sequels. They don't have to forgive each other. They just need to protect their son from danger. You know, it's weird that no one's brought up this dynamic before because it's literally what could happen in Avatar 3. I'm almost 100% certain right now. It puts Spider in the center of the conflict and brings two sworn enemies together for a common goal. Doesn't get more Shakespearean than that in a James Cameron movie. And that's it, folks. Let me know your theories, and I'll see you in the next video.